appreciation of the ground. You're actually standing in the German B-Lang. How do I know it's a German B-Lang? I'm using a device which is called a Lensman. A Lensman is a First World War map with a GPS. So it's basically telling me where I am. I'm literally not that far away from the German B-Lang. Do you see that cemetery in front of me there? That is Mill Road Cemetery. That was the German A-Lang. The German A-Lang all goes in a half circle towards, that's the best way to describe it, half circle. So this B-Lang would go half circle all the way to T-Fall, all the way down. Again, from the cemetery, it's a half circle. That's the best way to describe it. That wood down there is where the 109th Brigade, the 107th, and down at the bottom of the wood was the Downs with the South Antrim. And this is the way they were tagging, up this way. The corner of the wood, does everyone see the corner of the wood? Yeah. Yeah. Do you see that hill going up towards Teethfall? Yeah. That was the objective of the 32nd Division. Nugent wrote a letter to his wife saying that the fate of his division was in the hands of others. That's what he meant. <coughs> then men were slaughtered going up to try and take Teethfall. Slaughtered. Look at that ground. He's all any ex soldiers? Boys and girls, any axe soldiers? Yeah. Look at that, going up, attacking up the way. They were absolutely slaughtered. It was the 32nd Division's objective to take T-Fall. Yeah? We were attacking up this way. If you look over where I am now, straight ahead, you see a wood on the ridge, yeah? yeah. That's Buma Hummel Park. Start going back down, halfway across that field is a little place called the Mary Redden. So we had two battalions. We had the 12th uh, Battalion of the Royal Irish Rifles, Central Antrim, and we had the 9th Battalion of the Royal Irish Fusiliers <coughs> attacking, two battalions just attacking up there. What separated them was a river called the Ankara River. They were unsupported. To the left of the Emmons, towards the park, was the 29th Division. So does everyone get the the field for it. The 29th Division, two battalions of 36 Ulster Division to the river and the rest of the 36 Ulster Division attacking up this way. 29th, it's like the, the 32nd, it doesn't go to plan. Their objective at the 29th Division, does everyone see that wee village just in there? Yeah. That's Buma Hamel. that was their objective. They didn't get anywhere near it. They were wiped out. On the left hand side, you can actually still see the scar marks, can you? Look at that field of the war. The two battalions of the 12th Central Antrim and the Armaz attack three times unsuccessful. There's only limited gaps in the wire. The Germans have all machine guns on them gaps. Two Victoria Crosses are going to be won at that side of the Ankara for the 36 Ulster Division. And guess what it's for? Bringing in wounded soldiers. However, you can't see it from here, but at the dip of the hill, there's a little village called St. Pierre Division. And that was the objective for the 13th Battalion, the County Downs. However, as they start their attack, the machine gun posts haven't been took out. And they start to come. It's like anything, if you're starting to get hit in your left hand side, you're going to start having to come across. And they come up more and more in. So what you find is the 108th and the 109th Brigade are all mixed up. Tifal is, is not taken. So what does the German machine gunners do? They turn round, yeah? What do you think the machine gunners do? Switch round. So when the 36 Ulster Division are moving forward, they're getting it from the left-hand flank, they're getting it from the right-hand flank, and they're fighting their enemy that's in front of them. Think of a trench. A trench is well defended looking out this way. But if you get in a trench and you look that way, you're very, very much exposed. People don't realise as well that the Shraben Redoubt is a series of tunnels underneath the ground. And what it does, there's actually a tunnel that leads all the way to the Ulster Tower. If anyone's been to Mill Road, you'll actually see a lot of the headstones are flat down. That's because the ground is unstable. There's a series of tunnels. Who do you think was in the tunnels? The Germans. So the Germans were then coming through the tunnels, coming up. And we had Germans at the back of us as well. The corner of the wood, all the way down, is where the Ulster Division attacked. If we turn round, 
this is the bee line and if you're there you can see what's going on no problem but see if you look at that crest of the hill you start to get down in the dead ground and what we mean by dead ground is from there you're not unable to see what happens and that's where the 36 Ulster Division heavily rely on runners and what we had to do was to send our men to send information back and forth the Germans bombard no man's land why do you think that's for? so we can't send any troops or ammunition up to our men by the time we get to there's going to be a massive massive blunder Nugent looks about he's gone that attacks well, look at that it's a massacre just there and then what he does he makes a call to the core commander now bear in mind we're part of the fourth army tells general Merlin, don't send the 107th out don't send them we're making gains but both flanks are exposed Merlin overrules them send the boys out so the belfast brigade are ordered to come up and support the 109th and the two battalions of the 108th in this sector as soon as they go over the top, Nugent receives a phone call from the field telephone. It's General Moorland. You're right, don't send them. It's too late. The boys are in the attack. And we get beyond there. There's a little village. You can't see it. But that's the village of Grandcourt, just over at the other side of the hill. And that's the D-Lang. And we consolidate our position. The Germans are bringing up um, reinforcements and they're pushing us back. They're attacking us. And they're pushing us back so we have to give up the d-line and we consolidate on the c-line it's getting too much for us we then retreat to the b-line then it's getting too much for us we retreat down to the a-line and at the cover of darkness the lucky men are still alive make their way back to the start point of that attack however the next day the 107th is in charge of the wood, a Tiefel wood, and the Brigadier looks out, and it's actually Colonel Crozier, who's the commanding officer of the 9th West Belfast Royal Irish Rifles, and what they see is a small section of trench, still manned with soldiers, and what he does is sends out 360 soldiers to reinforce that, and it's a 107th brigade. So on the 2nd of July, the boys go up and over the top. The last battalion out is the 15th battalion. So the other three battalions get their men into the trench, no problem. The Germans see them. And the 15th battalion suffer 50% casualties. Imagine what you've seen there on the 1st of July. And you've been told to go over the, the top. They get into the trench. And when they're in the trench, when the officers all come, they're amazed. It's a corporal from the West Yorkshire Regiment. And basically what he has, he has men from West Yorkshire plus the injured men and mixed up men from the 36 Ulster Division holding off the Germans. So when we look at casualties, and we'll talk about casualties later on, officially what was said, first of all, was that there was five and a half thousand men missing, wounded, or, yeah, missing, wounded or dead. And there are guys were still holding that little bit off trench <coughs> that is all we had to gain from all them casualties and later on when we're down at Ulster Tower I'll speak about the actual fatalities itself when we break it down I said to people earlier on here Tifa Memorial stands in testament to the sacrifice especially for the 36 Ulster Division because statistically between 72% and 76% of the men that fail on this battlefield have no known grave. Have no known grave. They're commemorated on Tiefel Memorial to the missing. We're probably standing under the remains of soldiers. There's still a lot of soldiers out there, especially from the 36th Ulster Division, that have to be, um, who will be known, hopefully, and identified one day. This is the battlefield. And that's what I said to the guys that's on my bus. You could sit all day and you could talk about numbers, divisions. Up that hill, the 32nd Division. Unsuccessful. Look at what they have to do. They have to go up a hill. Remember Nugent's words. His fate of his division is not in his man's hands. 
It's on the hands of other people. And that's what he meant. He knew deep inside that that was going to be mission impossible. <laughs> the other side of that field, over to the left, towards the park, the 29th Division. It breaks down. And that's what happens to the fate of the 36th Ulster Division. They're getting it from behind, they're getting it from both flanks, and they're getting it in front of thing. <coughs> These men were thirsty, running out of ammunition, and they were actually taken. It was very, very hard for us to try and bring reinforcements because the Germans, as I said earlier on, were barred in no man's land. Them guys, the stories in this battlefield that will never, ever be told because it went to the grave. Think of the heroic stories that some of these men endured and no one survived to let us know. And this is when we look at the likes of this battlefield. It is very, very important to visit it. And I hope everyone's got a better appreciation of the battlefield. You've seen it for your own eyes. We're going to talk about Victoria Cross recipients later and another two will be one um, in this sector. One in the wood, which is Rifleman William McFadden. And we'll talk about um, Captain Bell as well later on. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Just where Ulster Tower is, that's the A line. So that gives you a bit of appreciation there. What size do you think that is? Where's the farmers? Where's all the farmers? Later anyway. <laughs> so you think that all wasn't there? You think what you could have seen, the Germans would have seen? And what the Ulster Division do as well? We sneak out into sunken lane before the attack and we basically run towards the German lines. That's going to be the downfall because everything's on a time for the artillery coming down and a lot of our men are killed by our own artillery, especially the dairies. The dairies were the... they went off that couple of split seconds before everyone else. But we achieved the unachievable. You think about it. We reached all our objectives against all odds. And it would be wrong to turn around and say the men of the 29th and the 32nd <laughs> Division did wrong. It was a mission impossible for them. However, the 36th Ulster <coughs> Division did have a very successful attack, but it was never ever going to be successful when on either flank the attack broke down. So I hope you've appreciated that there. It's a up on the ground looking on to it and it's one of the things when I started um, doing the tours that I wanted to explain the battle because you could sit all day and make the, the bus and you could talk about it but seeing it for your eyes it gives you a bit more appreciation um, for the battle. Is there any questions? Well that's us finished we're going to go down and start the parade. We're actually going to start the parade that the track that leads up to that wee cemetery which is um, leads on to sunken um, lane. We're here also to commemorate a local man for being a, and <coughs> it's Private Henry. What's his surname? Rainey. Rainey, yep. And this is the battlefield that he would have been attacking. This is, so, <coughs> this is where he would have died. And you think of the wee village, there's, there's, it's a real, real small, I know David's trying to get a wee plaque up and stuff. So we're going to go down and we're going to pay homage and tribute to Private Rainey. And it's spicy for that wee town. And across the province of Ulster, there was telegrams going about of the dead. The Orange Order lads will know that such was the news, the shock and the tragedy. The 12th of July was cancelled due to the fact of the loss. And this is going to be the first battle honour that the 36th Ulster Division will receive. It's going to be called the Battle of Albert, or what you can have is Psalm 1916. So if you look at the, the battle honours, if you see Psalm 1916 or the Battle of Albert, you'll know that you've been on the battlefield. No questions? That's us then, we'll head back to the buses. Take us into the German A lane. And then, the best way to appreciate this is probably looking when we go down over to the left hand side. <coughs> and Garth the poppy cross for Henry, really? 
So guys, we're actually in the German lines and this is the attack of the 32nd Division which was on the right hand side and what we're going to do is from about slow down a bit, yeah. from about here guys is the German A line you don't get the appreciation you don't really get the appreciation because with the crops being there but if you look at the corner of the wood there all the way up here is where the 32nd Division attacked Look at that guys, look, all up hill. So in the corner of the wood, all the way to Ulster Tower, and beyond is the 36th Ulster Division. The corner of the wood this way is the 32nd Division. Guys, you are actually in no man's land. So you're in no man's land. Do you remember I told you about the boys sneaking out? This is actually the lane that the boys sneak out. They get a head start. And now we're in to no man's land in the 36th Ulster Division. Do you remember I was telling you about the soldiers that was found? I'm actually going to point out where the soldiers were actually found and it was waiting in this road that they found it just to the corner there was where Sergeant Blakely was found and just on down here on the right hand side I'll show you was where the unknown Royal Irish Rifles soldier was found and that's Connick Cemetery and the best way to appreciate the land here is Connick is on your left, Mountain Road is on your right. All the way, if you walk up that lane where we're going to parade, that is no man's land, yeah? So you're right in no man's land. Oh, do you need my bag and all moved? No, no. no. <laughs> so guys, please listen to me here, please. Um, we're not going to go in the Ulster Tower. The ones that's doing parade, we need to get, we're going to have time afterwards because we'll have to make up for time. We're going to head in straight for the parade. Twenty-three. 
Thank you. 